Ulrich in Denmark writes to me, Hi Paul, love your videos. Thank you, sir. That's quite an honor. You know, I, the, I do these videos in batches, so the one you're watching now, I recorded about one week after Expona. I, I have to try and stay up because, oh, we've got stuff like uh, vacations and, and uh, uh, travel trips and all this stuff. So, so this is probably pretty late in the game for you to, oh, that was a, a month ago, you know, wh whatever. Anyway, <laughs> while we were at Expona, it was such a pleasure to meet everybody. People came up and were shooting selfies and what fun that was. What a great group of people. So thank you. Uh, I do appreciate it all. Um, and he does his best to watch them all. God help you. <laughs> what are your thoughts of speaker toe-in? I have noticed your FR30s never get a toe-in when you and your team installs them. Is that a result of their design? I currently run a pair of Canton Ventos, and in my room at least, they need a slight toe-in to perform at their best. Greetings from Denmark. Well, thanks, Ulrich. Yeah, these are, well, we almost always tow the FR30s in, but maybe just a little bit, not a whole lot, and much depends on how far away you are. I would say that on average, when I have seen FR30s and FR20s properly set up, they're usually about eight feet apart, tweeter to tweeter. They're slightly towed in, and the listener is about eight feet away from them. So you've got this triangle that's kind of a perfect little triangle, equilateral, I think that's what it's called. And yeah, we always tow it in a little bit. Now, at the studio, at Octave Records Studio, I've got a pair of FR20s, and because uh, in the control room where we do the recordings, a pair of FR30s in the mix room, and they are set up exactly like that, eight feet apart, slightly towed in, and it's, it's one of the better sounding systems I have ever heard. That mix room is just, I love my time in there. And if you come out on a tour, ask if we have time, we'll run you over to the studio and give you a little tour of Octave Records as well. I think everybody here has a key to it, so it's a mile away, so we certainly can walk there. But in the control room are the FR20s, now there, it's an unusual situation because I've, we got a big window that we have to be able to see the musicians in, and then we are, and because of that, we're fairly close to the speakers. And it's just, you'll, have, you'll see it, you'll understand. So because we're kind of close to the speakers, maybe five feet, six feet, like that, they aren't towed in at all, which you would think would be kind of the opposite. So the closer you get, the more you would tow it in, so it'd be like headphones. But in fact, that's not why, or it's not how you do it. And one of the reasons that the Aspen series of loudspeakers doesn't require or even want much in the way of tow-in and doesn't like to be too far apart is because of its amazing off-axis response. So a lot of speakers are flat-ish on axis which means on axis is when you're like right in front of it, right? That's, this is the straight line access here, axis. Um, but when you're sitting off here, you are off axis, right? You're off on away from the thing. And they're flat here, but as soon as it gets out and you get off axis, the response goes all over the map. Chris Brunhaver, who designs our speakers, is very big, as am I, on a very even smooth response off axis as well as on axis. And that's a big deal with these speakers because it allows you to not have to tow them in a lot. And the net result of that is an amazing sound stage that goes beyond the left and right speakers, way beyond, and gives you tons of depth, helps them disappear. That as soon as you have to start towing them in too much, you, you, it's a trade-off uh, in imaging. So anyway, that's, that's the deal. Okay. Thanks for the question. I'll talk to you later. Bye.